Selena Kyle's claws aren't the only one the Cape Crusader has to worry about. Here's a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, the gold label collection, Catman. Morally ambiguous and bored, Thomas Blake worked as a big game hunter, tracking big cats and selling them to zoos. His cat obsession led him to the Pacific Island, home to a cat cult, from where he stole a sacred cat carving and a cloth that covered it. Back in Gotham City, Blake became a costume criminal equipped with feline-themed accessories inspired by Catwoman and Batman, including catarangs and a turbocharged cat car. He eventually led the Mercenaries for Hire Secret Six, a team of anti-heroes doing as much good as they did evil acts. I'm hoping that Blake doesn't take this role too seriously. Part of me is afraid to check the cat's litter box after this review. Before we get a closer look, though, at the brand new Catman from Villains United, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did kindly provide the sample we could have a look at. I'm going to grab now as well, of course, the tape measure. As well, of course, the tape measure. And let's see exactly how tall Catman stands. Now, he is, in fact, using the same body as the Nightfall Batman. Obviously, for that, I'm going to be bringing in the Batman so you can see the same Zs between the two. But the figure is going to stand about 7 inches in height, or the figure is going to be 18 centimeters tall. Yeah, speaking of same Z's, let's bring in that Batman from the Nightfall line so you can see how they are using, again, the exact same bodies. Torso, arms, and legs are all shared between the two. They're actually, in fact, using the same boots also as well. But there obviously has been some new tooling that had to go into making a Catman. They couldn't simply have just taken Batman and just changed the coloring of his costume and just give us a Catman. No, of course, they had to give us a brand new head sculpt. The gloves are also different, and he has a brand new utility belt as well. And I'm okay, again, that the idea that they would have used the same bodies. If it means that we ever would have gotten ourselves a Catman, if for thinking of this, if they had just had to retool a brand new body from scratch, brand new head and all the body below it, I think the likelihood of us even talking about Catman would never have even happened. Now, he did get from inspiration, at least, both inspirations from both Batman and Catwoman. And it just happens to be the case that booked in on either side of him are both Batman and Catwoman from the Batman Nightfall. For a character that sits really low on the totem for me, at least. Again, I think the blessing of this figure is the fact that he's a gold label edition, which means that they're likely using... A lot of times, like 90% of the existing molds of an earlier released figure, and they're just simply coloring it differently and giving it a brand new head sculpt. Catman really does benefit from the fact that he is a gold label edition. He also, though, benefits from having a lot of accessories as well. Not only does he have gripping hands for holding the knives that are also included, but also included, the figure comes included with his claw hands as well. Before we kind of cover the territory to the right, let's cover first the territory to the left. Catman comes included with a comic-inspired trading card. Gone away, it seems, using figure photography. I'm sure many collectors were vocal enough about it that McFarlane's team realized that figure photography just wasn't cutting it when it came to included trading cards. And I gotta say, like, getting actual artwork, which I would imagine is pulled from the pages of Villains United, looks so much nicer than just a picture of Catman. Low, good lighting or not, it's still gonna be a picture of the figure. I'd rather this instead. Flipping around, though, to the back, the real name is Thomas Blake, and a pretty substantial read. You can pause and read for yourself at Happens to also be the same thing I read at the beginning of the video, so I've saved you a little bit of the legwork. But nice looking card. Definitely going to go with the rest of my trading cards. Yeah, you haven't yet seen my binder, but at the way I've actually segregated all of my cards, I have one section that sort of has, again, like all of the comic inspired cards where you actually have the pictures from the comics. And then I've also got a section later into my binder that actually has, again, all the figure photography. I know I've talked too much, too much about this. Let's move that to the side. The figure also comes in clue with the trading card, which I'll talk a whole lot less about. Same circular black stand, same DC logo, pss, branded down below. And again, you've got that singular peg that can plug into the either side. Either you have to choose one. You can't have both. Has to plug into either one of the boots for Catman. Let's move that also to the side. As already mentioned, the figure comes included with his knives. Now the knives seem to be, if I can look at these correctly, they seem almost identical to one another. If I flip this around, you'll get a better gauge of what I'm saying. The, the handles themselves, if I look at them, are actually painted in brown, while the rest of the blade and the end of the guard is actually looks to be all sort of more a dark gunmetal gray. These can be wielded in his hands, although ironically enough, they actually package the figure not with these gripping hands, but rather they package them first with actually the claw hands. I figured that the reveal of the claw hands made more sense to kind of pop the hands out already prior to hitting record. So actually 
these hands, the gripping hands, were already in the plastic tray. If you, though, wanted to take the hands, you would take, first of all, the knives and fit them into his hands. They fit fairly easily. In fact, actually, the grip that they've given him, get his cloth cape out of the way, the grip that they gave his hands are just wide enough that you really don't have to fight to get the, to get the knives in there. Uh, there is actually one other space that you can store the knives. Obviously, if you did want to decide, for example, you want to have them displayed like this, which I'm probably going to be going that direction anyways, there is at least a storage space. Let's just take the knives out of his hands right now. Do the exact same thing on the other side. Leading up, leading up. Where's this building up to? If we flip the cape around, which might I also add is a fabric cape, he has these holstered sections on the back of his belt. Just mind you, of course, getting his arms out of the way, you just take then the blades. And while he's blind to see what's in front of him, just slide the blades without poking yourself in the process. Just slide the blades down on the back of the figure's body and he can store them there. And that looks good. Not only does it look good from the back, but also when you're seeing it from the front, it does look at least he's like holstered something. It's not like we're just hiding in the back of the figure's body like the Bat Shield in the 66 series. So much rather instead, if you want to have the blades on the back, then you can then leave a lot more space a lot more uh, opportunity to then swap the hands out for these. He has these claw hands and rather interesting. If you look at the side of it, it actually kind of looks almost a little bit like the Batarang. Uh, he also does have Catarangs, but although Catarangs aren't included with this figure, but these really interesting claws, boy, these look great on the figure. They're not sharp. I mean, they're obviously you can feel like there's a little bit of a point on the end of it. And they're made of a fairly soft plastic. Just take the existing figure again, remove the hands from the pegs. Now, again, I had already done this because of course, just, as I was opening everything up, the gripping hands, strangely, were packaged separately. I would have just expected like the, I guess they really wanted to give as much appeal to the figure by having the claws already attached that somebody would then pick this up and say, hey, wow, kid, the guy's got claw hands. Yeah, he does literally have claw hands. So we're going to just pop these in place. And I got to say, like, it does bring a little bit more to the figure when he has them displayed. I mean, he has to unfortunately sacrifice then the use of gripping hands. But I think rather instead getting him claw hands is the nice way to go. Getting, though, a closer look at the head sculpt, just kind of move his, his arms out of the way. You know, the head sculpt, I will say, when I first saw images of him online and even just even seeing him inside the box, I wasn't really wowed by the head. I think now that I've had the chance to have this guy out of the packaging... I think the head has grown on me. I've now warmed up to the idea that the head sculpt sort of has like a face like he stepped inside his own litter box that hasn't been cleaned for a while. And he's like, ah, <laughs> he does sort of have that head sculpt, doesn't he? The expression on his face while looking a little on the tad silly side, at least it does have some personality going for him. He doesn't simply just have like a stoic face sculpt, like all the Batmans that we generally get. Like, I'm just going to, again, reach off to the side and bring back in the Nightfall Batman. You know, again, like this Nightfall Batman has just a regular neutral expression. So I think to that, Cat Catman has at least something a little bit more interesting going on for his face. It sort of does look like he's left behind some business that somebody's going to have to clean up, but at least it's a head sculpt that has some personality going for it. The coloring on his costume, mostly kind of more this caramel brown, what's rather interesting is the fact that they actually gave him a cloth cape. I'm not sure why specifically they chose to give him a cloth cape, then when for all intents and purposes, they could have easily just retooled this bat cape and just put it on to the cat man. Because essentially, again, like it's just using the same figure body anyways. Obviously, they probably would have had to done away with the points on the bottom. But yeah, I mean, easily they could have just tooled it. So it would have just been a flat bottom. Why does this figure, for example, get gifted a, a fabric cape and then all the other figures generally are all just plastic capes? It's a bit jarring because obviously if you are one that loves cloth capes, you're going to love the idea that Catman actually does have one. But if you are one that likes to have your figures consistently on your shelf, all sort of looking the same, Catman may then stand out, not simply just by the face of disgust that he has, but also for the fact that he does have a cloth cape. Like the material that they use is actually quite good. It's sort of more an elasticity, kind of got a little bit of a stretch to it. And it has some decent texturing to it. Like it's got an interesting pattern to it where it's not simply just a smooth fabric that they went with. The actual suit itself, again, carrying over the browns that he has in the trunks, the gloves, his utility belt's a little bit darker of a brown, but he's also got that brown still also in his boots, which again are like from a leg standpoint, if you were to just cover this over with your finger, all from like the utility belt down is just the same Batman as before. And all like really from the utility belt up is all still the same torso as the Nightfall Batman. So like the arms, the torso, and again, like all the legs and everything else is all going to still be Nightfall Batman. So at least there are changes that are made. He's got, of course, the Catman scratches there on the front of his chest, a brand new utility belt that has a few pockets. I'm not really sure what he's actually storing in there. A little sample packs of catnip, perhaps. Well, he's just sort of bummed out. He's been defeated by Batman again. He sort of just 
smells his little packet of, of catnip. I know it drives my cats crazy. I don't know if it would actually would drive a man dressed as a cat crazy as well. Either way, though, the articulation for Catman, let's get this back on track. The head is on a ball joint, so it rotates all the way around. The head does look up, quite actually quite far, and uh, also looks down too. So like, and again, if he's kind of looking down on his box, wondering... Let's just drop drop the joke about the cat cat box. Head does rotate back and forth or hinge back and forth, I should say. The upper torso is on a ball joint. The only thing you have to really obviously worry about is the fact that if you have the if you have the blades in the way, when you are rotating in this, it's obviously going to start to run up and brush up against the handles of the knives. Just be careful of that. The torso does look back this far, and you can also bring it forward this uh, this way as well. And the figure also does have a, a waist swivel. I think he actually does have a waist, waist swivel. Maybe it's just does, I'm just going to go back and look at this, the Batman here. I think the Batman had a waist swivel. Am I just making this up? Have I been smelling these sacks of catnip for too long? Maybe he actually just has an upper torso ball joint. The legs do split, at least they're on ratcheted joints. You can hinge them actually quite far. Take the legs and you can move them forward. You can move them back. Top swivel at the top of the thigh, more the way it's been assembled in the factory, but the figure does have a double hinge on the knees. No articulation, once again, on the boots, but he does have at least ankle articulation both this way, this way, and the figure also has toe articulation as well. I mean, I had already said this before, and I'll just kind of reiterate it again as we wrap things up here. Let's just get Catman to stand, at least in a way that he's not going to fall forward. We'll bring back in the Batman here. You know, again, like I think Catman benefits from being really a gold label edition. If not for that, if not for the fact that we had already gotten this Batman before, we may not have even had this discussion about sacks of catnip being stored in a utility belt. But he does benefit from, again, using a lot of the molds. The only thing that's really different about Catman is the utility belt, the brand new gloves, obviously the brand new hat, and the fact that the figure has a cloth cape. Why does the figure have, again, a cloth cape when, like, all the other DC Multiverse figures up to this point, there are a few exceptions to that rule, but usually they're always, like, plastic capes. Why wouldn't they have just simply remolded the cape, cut the bottom off so it doesn't have the Batman cape points and simply not just use the cape for then Catman. Whether you do like cloth capes or not, I mean, again, it's something that's a little bit different to break up what would be an otherwise copycat mold. Ah, I just realized what I said, copycat mold. You know, speaking of copycats, considering that really Catman is, as a character, as a criminal, a copycat to both Batman and Catwoman, it is fitting really in a way that he ends up being a mold that's been used before in an other earlier figure. In a way, sort of, it is ironic the fact that Catman as a figure is releasing as a gold label edition, which are always, again, known for being figures that were released before. Usually it's usually sometimes the same character with a, a brand new head sculpt or a slightly different color scheme. Catman benefits from not only a different color scheme, but a brand new head sculpt as well. And again, I was really, again, surprised to see that the figure had as many accessories as he did. I mean, really, the figure could have just been packed with the claw hands and just left the knives out completely. And that also would have saved the plastic of producing gripping hands, too. But no. This time around, Catman not only gets two pairs of interchangeable hands, but he also has the knives as well. Unfortunately, though, one has to be sacrificed for the other. So if, if you did like the claw hands, for example, you're going to have then no place to store the, store the knives in his hands. But at least they thought of that. They did put holsters on the back of the figure's body. Just though, be careful when it comes to rotating the torso that you don't clip the knives, holster them on the back of the figure's body. What do you guys, though, by the way, also think of the fact that they used a cloth cape? Is this something you would like to see them use for maybe future figures? Or would you maybe Maybe just like to see them use plastic capes. I know that's sort of an ongoing debate. Which is a better cape to have on a figure? Cloth cape or plastic capes? For me, I think it's on a figure-to-figure -figure basis. I think maybe for Catman it works because a little, there's a little bit more give to the back of the fabric that they've used versus an all-solid plastic cape. But honestly, I kind of like the finished look of having a figure that's all plastic where you don't have just cloth capes on the back of the figure's body. But what, where do you guys stand when it comes to capes? Do you prefer plastic sculpted capes or do you prefer fabric capes? Let's have a big debate down below in the comment section. Once again, though, a big thank you to the folks over at McFarland Toys that did provide the sample of the brand new DC Multiverse Villains United Gold Label Edition Catman. Just looking over at the box right now. Has he moved stuff? Oh, he's knocked litter all over the floor as well. That means he's been using it. Oh, sorry. How do I know that he's been using it? Oh, just the fact that there's like half a bag of litter all over the floor. My cats would not, not knock that much litter. It's got to be Catman. Oh, I'm not looking forward to cleaning that. If you guys enjoyed this video, why not hit it with a like? Why not? If you guys are enjoying the content, certainly would like to stick around for more. If you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And you're also as well turning on the bell notification. There will be more DC Multiverse reviews coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.